Hello, I'm Joe Milne. I'm a technology journalist and I'm here at InsureTech Rising, joined by Joe Ahern, who's a policy advisor for general insurance at ABI. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Um, me. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about some of the trends and the changes impacting the insurance sector right now? Well, just thinking of, um, you know, to pick three, uh, the first is probably an aging population is having a huge impact on the uh, on the insurance sector. Uh, most obviously on the kind of on the life side of things in terms of uh, how an aging population affects uh, how, uh, profitability in the long term savings sector, particularly with customers with things like guaranteed annuity rates. How do you um, build that into your models and make sure that you're still got a profitable uh, proposition? Uh, but also in the general insurance team, uh, how you make sure uh, in the advent of an aging population that you still have good access to your products, uh, that you make sure that you're cope dealing with vulnerable consumers uh, well uh, and you know, catering for the additional needs they might have in terms of uh, certain vulnerabilities and uh, you know, that inevitably you have an older population there's going to be more cognitive issues later on in life. Uh, so that's one. Uh, another thing that's clearly happening at the moment is there's a lot more political instability than we've seen before. Um, obviously the rise of populism uh, in, in Europe and in the US uh, and this has huge impact on financial services clearly because um, financial services is very closely interwoven uh, with the political ecosystem uh, and big changes in the political ecosystem and big instabilities uh, cause uncertainty in financial services and, and can cause big changes in financial services that uh, are almost always disadvantageous um, to insurers. Amazing. Um, and you've got a sort of particular interest at the moment in the cyber yeah. insurance uh, field. Are, are insurers keeping up with this new risk effectively? Would you say that sort of the current offerings are cutting it? I think that the current offerings have come a long way in the past few years. Um, obviously, this is when we're talking about the cyber insurance market, we're talking about something which was very much started in America. Um, it was kind of birthed uh, to a large extent by the, the data breach notification laws in the US. Um, and that you had a product there that was very much built around uh, data breach and very much about uh, you know, compensating those individuals and helping businesses to kind of comply with a, with a regulatory um, uh, program. Uh, but now we've seen uh, the market kind of shift and the market in Europe is more around business interruption uh, and dealing with those kind of first party costs that exist for businesses uh, that can be very substantial when a cyber attack happens, particularly thinking of things like ransomware attacks. Um, you can see a huge cost there uh, that, that, that occur. Uh, in terms of, so that's, there's, a, I think, a, a broader range of coverage. Policy limits are about four times higher than they were on average five years ago. So there's much more capacity in the market, so, so it's growing. Um, uh, and that's good. And coverage is growing as well. We can see uh, you know, very strong annual rates of coverage. We expect the GDPR to, to grow that even more. But obviously, coverage has to grow sustainably. And uh, carriers uh, are not going to take on all the risks that they don't necessarily understand yet and broaden their coverage to an extent that it's, uh, it becomes not prudent uh, from an underwriting perspective. Uh, and so, you know, you see uh, there's coverage in certain areas. So, for example, reputational damage, uh, things like, you know, damage to market capitalization as a result of a cyber attack. Uh, that's really quite nascent uh, and it will take a, a long time for the market to grow and adapt to understand the risk more until they'll be more comfortable and have the capacity to cover things like that. You mentioned GDPR. How yep. can how can policymakers and regulators support sustainable growth um, of the cyber insurance market? Well, it's really to, it, it's really in assisting insurers to understand the risk better, mm. uh, and it's really about providing the insurers with the data to help them to understand it better. Uh, and the thing that the GDPR gives in terms of a, a huge opportunity for the industry is it creates a huge new um, field of data. So under the GDPR, one of the kind of the big requirements under it is that the mandatory breach notification aspect. So if you have uh, a breach at a company, uh, and then you uh, and it, it results in a breach of someone's personal privacy, their personal data is leaked, then you must report that breach to the GDPR, uh, to the ICO, sorry, uh, and information around it. Uh, that creates, assuming that there's a 100% reporting rate, that creates a huge new cache of data uh, for the industry to use uh, to underwrite and understand risk better. Uh, and that, that, that could be hugely useful to underwriters. It could potentially help them to extend, expand their offerings, you know, potentially uh, uh, you know, change, the way, uh, change the way they do things and make sure they understand their risk better and, and, yeah, and improve their offerings. So you're talking a lot about this idea of understanding risk better. I mean, yeah. it, it, with cyber attacks, we're kind of starting to realize that there's no real way of actually protecting a company from a cyber attack. You can do all the things you can, but at the end of the day, there's always a way in. How do the, how do the models work considering you can effectively 100% protect. Well, there's an interesting uh, report by EOPA recently, which looked at some of the, uh, which is a survey of some of the models that cyber insurers are using. 
And there's a mix between some that are using a kind of a quantitative model that believe that you can really quantify cyber risk uh, and, and build a model that way as a more traditional, traditional sense, or some that build into more uh, have a much more qualitative approach and believe that you just kind of have to look at things and have just a, a general understanding of things in terms of uh, predicting where uh, predicting where attacks are going to happen in terms of their severity. But um, in terms of managing the risk, I mean, we are I think now seeing a shift in the dialogue around cybersecurity where it's moving away from security to resilience and that's why insurance is becoming increasingly uh, increasingly important uh, and, and we think that's that's beneficial in terms of how insurers manage their risk I think the important thing for insurers which is the most difficult thing is to manage your aggregation risk um, it, it's much more difficult in cyber insurance to manage your aggregation risk than it is with uh, other product lines, you can you know, make sure you've only got certain buildings in a certain part of London. Mm -hmm. So if there's a fire in that part of London, then you're only going to have damage associated with certain buildings. With cyber insurance, it's much more difficult, uh, particularly when you get into things like supply chain cover. So that's why I think um, people, people are focusing on that aspect of it. So zooming out a little bit and, and thinking about the broad cyber industry or trend that's happening right now, there's a, lot, there's a lot changing, there's a lot of news coming out, there's a lot of different methods happening both in the sort of white hat space and in the black hat space. How yeah. do you keep up with this in order to be effective as a policy advisor? I'm very lucky in the organisation in the I because we are there to represent the insurance industry and represent um, cyber risk carriers basically is that our, our, our members are very generous with their time and, and the best, the best, the best uh, thing you can do to understand the cyber insurance market is to speak to a cyber underwriter and they'll tell you you know what's going on uh, where the big claims are uh, the types of things that they're seeing uh, and that you know, that's in my view is the, is the best way to understand things uh, but also keep up with what the things that the regulators are putting out and you know there's always a, the, the odd report coming out about the cyber insurance market that you can keep up with awesome Joe thank you very much for your thank time thank you